Hey, hey, it's TBA and welcome to this step-by-step -step guide to Dyson Sphere program. This series is intended for players that are relatively new to the game or are simply overwhelmed by the complexity. And today I will show you an easy and efficient way to scale up into the mid-game while staying super organized. But first we're going to rename the starting system to Anubis Khan who recently became a member of this channel. So if you'd like to support me and see your name in my universe as well, you know what to do. As nice and tidy as the starting facility look, this is obviously not going to cut it. So we're going to need to scale things up a lot. And scaling up is actually an art because it's easy to build too much of the wrong thing and then spend hours fixing it just to find out that you now created a new problem elsewhere. So another thing is that in order to scale up, we need to pay attention to the few dozen technologies. <coughs> As nice and tidy as this starting facility looks, this is obviously not going to cut it for very long. So we need to scale things up and a lot. Now scaling up is actually an art because it's easy to build too much of one thing and then spend hours trying to fix whatever is wrong with that just to find out that you can now create a problem elsewhere. So the approach that I'm going to use today will try to avoid all of that. Another thing is that in order to scale up, we actually need to pay attention to the few dozen technologies I completely ignored so far, including a better belts, better sorters, and what else, proliferators, better assemblers, etc, etc. So there's a lot of things that we have already unlocked that we haven't actually made use of, and now is the time to start doing so. The first episodes were laser focused on getting the first three science types up and running, which allows us to transition straight into the mid game, since we can now connect our planets with these ILSs. A common mistake that people make is that they get too attached to their starting planet and try to build everything there. Objectively, it's a pretty shitty planet. There's barely any resources here. I mean, a few million might sound like a lot, but it's really not. And there's a lot of water in the way wherever you want to build. The water itself is a resource, so it's, it has that going for it, as well as the oil and a lot of coal. But other than that, it's, it's a pretty, pretty mediocre planet at best. Which means we are going to pack up and leave. And before we do that, you might want to take a look at your power and either fix it or just leave it. It actually doesn't matter that much, but if it annoys you, just plop down a couple of these wind turbines and let this facility do its job. Even at low power, you should still be getting a um, decent amount of blue, reds, as well as a little bit of yellow signs incoming. And that should be enough to do a lot of the research in the background while you're just progressing and setting up your next facility. Now, make sure that you don't like initially start out with the most expensive stuff, but make sure you start researching things in kind of the order of cost. So the cheapest things first, expensive things last. Now before you start filling up your inventory in order to leave the planet, there's a nice little trick I want to show you. So fill up your inventory with some stacks of titanium as well as some hydrogen, which you can get from your uh, storage tanks over here. And then craft yourself a whole bunch of hydrogen fuel rods. It's the same item that you initially got from your landing pad. And as you can see, as soon as I queue these up, all the uh, resources that are needed to make them already get used up from my inventory. So if I now fill it back up again, I can queue up a few more of them. And basically like this, it's a very easy way to stockpile yourself some fuel. And these fuel rods will last you a lot longer than the coal will. So it's definitely an easier way to fuel your mech, especially if you're going on a longer trail like we are. Now before we leave, make sure you connect some water as well as your oil to the ILS that's already here and just set it to remote supply. It doesn't need to look pretty, it doesn't need to have a huge amount of production. As you can see, I just have a handful of um, water pumps over here and I'm just using the oil that I already have. But basically, just make sure you get it going. Don't overthink what you're going to be bringing, just make sure it's plenty of belts and sorters as well as a few hundred of each production machine along with maybe one or two stacks of towers so you can actually power everything up. Other than that, the only thing you're really going to need is some miners as well as storage boxes 
And you're probably also going to want to bring at least one stack of turbines just to make sure you have some basic power. The main thing I would suggest that you don't forget is the ILS. You're going to need at least one more ILS. So if you haven't crafted that yet, make sure that you do. Now we're actually going to hop over to the planet where we were already mining silicon and make sure that we hook up a few miners to a node and put it connected to the logistics station. Now there's a few things to note here that uh, I want to share. So first of all, in order to mine a node effect effectively, I usually just place around six miners around it, try to hit five or six uh, veins with each miner and then make a little squares form like this and just feed them off a single belt. Now, of course, this doesn't actually work with a Mark 1 belt like I have over here. But this is the general design that I always go for. Just make sure that all the nodes are hit so you don't leave one node out in the open because there's no miner attached to that. And this should easily fit into one belt. There's no real need to optimize this any further than that unless you're playing on very low resources. Now the second thing I want to note is that as you can see I have a lot of bots flying around, I'm doing a lot of stuff and my energy is barely dropping. And again that is purely due to the fuel rods, so if you haven't been using them, um, well you probably should. And last but not least, don't forget to actually set the silicon in your ILS and set it to remote supply. Don't bother about the power or anything like that, it's probably going to be low anyway. But you just need, need some inflow of these ores rather than a high amount of inflow. The main goal for today is going to be the planet that we haven't actually visited yet. And this is where we're going to set up our initial scaling facility. And why? Well, for one, there's not really anything special going on, on this planet. But a huge plus is that there's a 100% construction area. That means no lava, no oceans getting in the way, no issues with soil piles or whatever. Uh, we can just build wherever we want. On top of that, there's pretty good ratios for wind and solar energy. And there is still a pretty decent amount of resource in, on here. So we might as well put this planet to use. When you land on a planet, take a moment to look around. On most planets, there should be a certain zone where there is no veins at least very little of them and as you can see over here we have a huge open space where we can easily make our larger builds and that is where we want to be i recommend that you start building at the edge of the large open area around the equator this is the largest area where you can build and it's also the easiest area to make things like blueprints that will actually be able to be used all over the planet now the first room we're going to be building is a very simple layout like this with a total of 30 smelters, two lines of 15 and with a single belt going to the middle to supply and then two outgoing belts on each side for the outputs. Now these are going to be supplied with a storage unit as well so we have some way to collect all of these outputs and of course we're going to have to hook this all up with sorters. Now once you have this, all you need to do is just copy this layout, use now and plop it down right next to the other one and you're good to go with your second build. Now this second one is actually not going to be making iron or ingots, it's actually going to be making magnets. And once you have this one, all you need to do is once again copy and paste it and you might actually want to save this blueprint as it's a pretty useful layout to have. And then just copy and paste it two more times in order to set this up for a couple of other types of ingots. In those next sections we're going to be producing steel, copper, silicon and titanium. Basically all the base resources that we're going to need for now. Now, I know this is all based on Mark 1 belts, Mark 1 sorters. It's not actually going to function optimally, but that's not the point. We just want to keep this going. So the first thing we want to do now is put some power up, preferably somewhere near the pole so it doesn't get into the, in the way, and hook up some miners as well as an ILS because we brought one with us. Something like this. Now, of course, because we don't have Mark III builds, this won't run optimally, but it doesn't have to. And in fact, we'll probably have a lot of power issues still because this ILS is draining a shit ton of power for the simple reason that the interstellar flights cost a lot of energy and it's bringing in a lot of uh, silicon ore at the moment because we don't have any on this planet. Uh, you don't necessarily need to bother about steel. We won't need it for a little while and we want to automate things as well. Uh, but at least now we have all our base resources up and running. 
A small detail that's easy to miss is the way I've set these belts up like here. So this main line, the line that's going straight on through, is going to get priority over the lines that are uh, coming in from the side. And that means that in this case, for example, the node over here, this, this copper node, is first going to be the one supplying these smelters before we take the assistance from the ILS. It's not going to alternate or anything. No, this line will take priority. And that's a really convenient way to make sure you use up the resources on your planet first before you start drawing them in from elsewhere. Now we're going to repeat the same process this time with assemblers. Make sure you leave yourself plenty of room in between your smelters and assemblers and also a little bit more room between the assemblers themselves because we want to be able to fit in multiple belts. The idea being is that we're going to be producing two items side by side. And a lot of these higher tier items have a lot of items in common. So you can actually kind of make use of one belt for multiple uh, production streams. For example, of course, my favorite type of production combination is magnetic coils that use the magnets in the copper and the circuit boards that also uses the copper, but then adds in the iron. Now we can make a very nice layout like this. And we have a very simple facility that makes both circuit boards and magnetic coils. And all we need to do is just drop in the requested resources and it should all work. Assuming of course we actually hook it up to power, which apparently I failed to do. There we go. But then you, we should have some circuit boards and coils coming in. Of course, we don't want to keep doing this manually, but even though we are working on very low power, we'll probably find that these boxes are pretty much filling up already. Uh, and it's really easy to kind of just stand between these boxes and fill them up for now manually. Just get it going and we're going to replicate this same layout a few more times. And in those facilities, we are going to be making some gears, some composites and some processors. And that means we now have all the base resources we need to make all the most important stuff. Not to mention we can now easily handcraft some Mark 1 belts and sorters if you're running out of those so you don't have to fly back. You can also make the power towers. Pretty much you can make all the basics now with the exception of a few things if you need so don't fly back and forth between your planets although if you do want to do that by all means go ahead but i want to focus on the next step of our progress now so there's three things that we want to solve as quickly as possible first of all power second of all logistics and third automation of all the things that we can now handcraft but we don't really want to do that and in order to do that i'm once again going to make a nice little layout probably in the same uh, line that we've done before now there's a couple of things that we want to produce in high amounts and one of those things is going to be solar panels as you can see over here now these require three inputs and because we have two lines we do not want to have all the three inputs coming through the middles you can try but you won't be able to fit all the sorters in there so we're going to have to have two inputs in the middle that can be shared by both of these things and then we're probably going to have to bring in another resource, something like this. Um, coming from the side and then go around like that. Um, maybe I should take that on the outside. And then we have, of course, an outgoing belt with the actual um, solar panels. So uh, the solar panels are going to go again in a box, something like this. And then we're going to have the boxes with the supply materials, something like that over here. Now let me clean this up and connect some sorters and powers and let me show you what that looks like. And there you go, we have all the base materials coming in from the left manually for the moment, but we'll fix that soon enough. And we now have some solar panels coming out, which we can use to start quickly charging up the power that we have available to us. You can use a very similar layout as well as logic to make a build for pretty much any building at this point. And again, I grouped two buildings together that not only go, go together, uh, but they actually need the same resources, at least most of the same resources as well, which are the distributors that need the same processors and iron that are also going to be required for the bots that again need those two items. Now we also need turbines and exciters, which we're currently not producing yet, but we'll fix that in a moment. Something else we want to fix is the production of belts and sorters. And we're going to make Mark 1, Mark 2, and Mark 3 belts, as well as Mark 1 sorters, Mark 2 sorters, and Mark 3 sorters, something like this. 
Now the reason I want to group these together is very practical because of course in order to make Mark II belts for example we actually need the Mark I version along with turbines. And hey look if we want to make Mark III sorters we actually also need turbines. And similarly if we want to make Mark III belts we also need the Mark II and so on. So these actually share a lot of resources and they also need to be kind of fit together in order to um, benefit from each other. Now I leave a lot of space in between because I also want to be able to proliferate at some point and well let's just get some more storage boxes going and see what this looks like when we kind of clean it up. I don't know about you but this looks pretty organized to me. We have all the um, sorters and belts figured out over here with some base resources coming in from the left. And then from the right we have all the engine types as well as graphene coming in. Now of course we're again not producing everything of that we are going to need over here just yet. But at least now we have the facilities up and about for the moment that we do. So that means that we're now going to go back to extend our production a little bit further as well as fix our power because hopefully we have some solar panels waiting for us now. Probably quite a few already despite the low power. 20 here, 40 here. Yep, that's going to be fine. Totally unexpected I know but we just added in some more stone and glass and of course we made sure it's being supplied from the planet itself with some stone. But you can also bring the stone back in from the ILS and again uh, use the side entrance type of connection to make sure it prioritizes the local stone over anything that comes from a different planet. Now putting that stone to use we can continue on by making a new assembler layout that is making prisms and exciters. Now remember the exciters do actually need the prisms so this is kind of looping back on itself not necessarily with a belt but with a soon to be logistic bots bringing the output from the prisms back into this box and then putting it into the exciters. Now again for now that will have to be done manually but that won't take very long. Now to make sure we can actually start making some sorters as well as belts we're going to need a lot of engines and this layout is a little bit different from the other ones because right now we have three inputs and still two lines of assemblers which means we have two inputs on the inside and then one input on the outside so it's similar to what you've seen before but it's worth pointing out that this won't work if you have three belts in the middle once again it's a mistake i used to make a lot so don't be like me basically and then it's time for everyone's favorite little green engine, namely the turbines. And as you can see, there's only a single line because this is such an advanced type of product that for now, one line is going to be more than enough. Anything more than that, we won't have enough engines to go in there anyway. So yeah, just stick to one line. This means we now have all the resources in order to automate the logistics distributors and bots as well as Mark III sorters. Not quite the Mark III belts yet, but we'll get to that very quickly. But before we get to that, make sure you automate the entire production string of distributors and logistic bots. The reason for that being is that that allows you to then automate everything else. So you no longer have to run back and forth between these boxes and make sure that everything keeps working. And after just a little while your base should look something like this with a flurry of bots flying around providing all the stuff to the various places it needs to go. Now if you run into any range issues all you need to do is plop down a little facility like this with one station requesting and one station supplying and you can basically double the range of your stations. Um, power will be fixed with just a couple of lines of these solar panels don't underestimate how much power that actually brings. And yeah, you are now mass producing the things that we've created. Now, you might be running low on basic items at this point. So there's no harm in flying back and forth to your home planet just to pick up some stuff from your mall. But of course, we don't want to keep doing that forever. So if you do that, make sure that you also bring some more uh, fuel rods and stuff like that. Basically, make sure you fill up your inventory. But now let's focus on recreating our mall on this planet. Okay, so I just stamped down the original blueprint from the mall, but of course we need to adjust this a little bit because we won't need belts or sorters anymore because we already mass produced those elsewhere. Uh, let's see, what else don't we need anymore? We don't need to locally produce these engines anymore. 
we also don't really need to produce these things over here anymore and I'm actually going to mass produce these uh, foundations elsewhere so we can also take those out now that means we kind of need to rearrange this and we also need to make sure it's actually being supplied with something so uh, let me work on that and show you the end result and there we go nothing world shocking here it's just the same boxes with distributors on top of them as well as some boxes to actually supply this with all the materials there's a few new additions we have the spray coders as well as the uh, towers over here that I added in just because it had some room left and honestly everything else is just as it used to be the only difference is that I did move over the um, refinery a little bit to the left and well yeah as you can see all the um, crafting boxes have now been replaced with simple supply box instead identical to the build for the solar panels we now also have a dedicated build for foundations because we need them in such high amounts that i think it's worth making a separate build for that but other than that it's identical to uh, what we've done before now this is great and all but at this point you're probably screaming at me tda when are we finally going to get those mark three belts well don't worry we're in the home stretch for this episode so in order to make those we're going to need these super magnetic rings and we're going to need graphene, neither of which we have made yet. And this is probably not going to come as a surprise because by now I think you know the pattern that I'm using to build up this planet. And we simply have another row of 30 smelters for graphite as well as the same for diamonds. We don't actually need the diamonds yet, but we will at some point, so we might as well include it in our build. Now we actually have a very tiny amount of coal on this planet and it's actually right next door. I honestly didn't plan that, but hey, we might as well make use of it. But this is also where the ILS comes in because we definitely need to bring in coal from the other planet very soon. And using that graphene, we can start working on the super magnetic rings. Now, you might need to uh, jumpstart this a little bit by putting in some turbines manually because that's one of the most the things that is most in demand. But if we check, for example, the box right over here, you can see we have plenty of those waiting for us. So we might as well just, just kind of throw in a couple of stacks and make sure it starts working. That leaves the graphene and in order to make a graphene remember we also need to make acid so we're going to need to make a lot of liquid related things and I like doing so in the area that's kind of above the middle area so if you look at these yellow lines this huge billable area in the middle of the planet I like to reserve for all my assemblers and smelters and the liquids tend to go in this area above we actually need quite a few chemical plants making stuff but in general you need a lot less of those than you need of everything else so this is why i divide those up just in order to stay organized and know what is where on my planet and this is where our planning ahead really pays off because we already have oil and water coming in and that means we are now able to make some acid over here assuming we actually supply this with stone we have plenty of that on this planet now of course we also need the graphene and as soon as we have some acid going and we throw in some of this graphite then we should also have the graphene up and running that leaves us with one more thing to do which is the mark II assembler because of course we want to speed up the production as much as we can and the mark II assembler will help us do just that so this is an identical layout to the one we have over here for the distributors and logistics bots but this time we have it requesting the mark one assemblers which we are making in this basic mall over here and we are uh, requesting of course the graphene and the processors now all we need to do is kind of wait and upgrade our system as we go along because we are now producing everything we need in terms of Mark III sorters, the uh, basic buildings, the Mark II assemblers, as well as the Mark III belts. And that is everything we need in order to get an efficient system up and running. Now, at this point, I suggest you kind of double back on your production lines and upgrade them as you go. Uh, specifically you might want to start with things like the um, graphite over here as well as iron which are likely to be your main bottlenecks and kind of just go back and upgrade these 
if you're wondering how this is supposed to work in the long run you can already see this diamond line backing up so soon there will be no reason for any graphite to go in here so the graphite will automatically spread across the other requesting stations for the graphite you can't actually um, tell the distributors where to go it will just decide by itself and actually does so in order of which you build the towers which is really annoying and it's probably something the developers are going to change later on but right now there's no real logic to where the distributors are distributing their items to now normally i would say that using a modular type of approach is really bad because it's really hard to balance it out for exactly that reason because you can't decide what goes where but when it comes to a mall and basically what we're doing here is building a mall planet um these buildings you're not going to be using non-stop so they don't need to be produced non-stop of course you do want them to be produced in large quantities but there will be a point where you're focusing on something that's not science for example and these matrix labs will just fill out completely right now i only have a few because my system still has to balance itself out but there will be a point where you have more than you need of these buildings and everything will just back up so it's actually going to balance itself out because of that because as you can see uh, these lines are currently standing still so that means that all the other items that are being produced in terms of circuit boards etc are going somewhere else in the production chain now remember that upgrading a facility is actually really easy so just select the upgrade tool over here select the area select and make it as big as it gets and make sure you upgrade both the belts and the sorters and set it to plus two because we are probably upgrading them from mark one to all the way back to mark three uh, depending on what you're actually upgrading of course but all you need to do is just click your mouse button and paste all over this and now you will have instantly mark three belts and sorters now remember that you also need to upgrade the inputs and in order to do that you can once again use the upgrade tool but actually shift clicking a line will upgrade that entire line now you do need to be a little bit careful about this because it will only upgrade it within the building range so as you can see over here this one are still of mark one belt so i need to make sure i follow it all the way back to the root and upgrade it accordingly including the small little belts intersecting the larger one if you forget anything then of course that won't actually be upgraded now you do need to make sure you have enough material so for example now i can't upgrade this because I'm out of my base materials, but I will soon replenish that because as you can see, my production line suddenly sped up by a lot. Now, I'm not going to deny that all of this is a bit of work, but it's definitely worth it because now we basically have an entire planet set up as a mall. And not only that, but it's extremely easy to scale this up further in order to progress um, further into the game, but also revisit this planet and adds more elements to it as we progress not only that it's extremely organized and it's pretty straightforward to build so even though it takes a bit of time it's definitely not too complicated so you should be able to replicate this fairly easy in your own playthrough as you can see i am utilizing these buffer elements a little bit because of the range that i am still researching but other than that it's actually a very painless way of setting this up and i I think it's kind of cute with all these rover worlds flying all over the place now of course this is a local mall and it's definitely not an interstellar mall just yet so if you want to make sure we can turn it into exactly that and get access to all of this anywhere we want very easily on whichever planet we decide to um, settle on then make sure you watch the next episode for now i hope you found this useful if you have any questions please feel free to leave them in the comments and i will answer them and for now if you're still here you're awesome and i hope to catch you in the next one